Uh, ultra runner from Cork, Conor O'Keefe, is with us to talk to us about the madness that has uh, taken over his life. So, um, what are we at? The 26th of February. And yeah. how long have you got before you're... Um... Uh, coming up about five weeks before I start this. 32 marathons in 32 days. In 32 counties. With 32 pounds on your back. Yeah. Why? Uh, <laughs> well, I suppose the, the simple answer is uh, I'm trying to raise €100,000 for Pay the House. Um, th there's multiple ways as to why I'm actually doing it. Um, th I wanted to do 32 counties because I wanted to, to bring it everywhere and I wanted everybody to see it. Um, and then the 32 pounds was kind of a, a later addition. Because um, that, that was wasn't enough. A marathon no, a day yeah. for 32 days wasn't enough. Well, my background is I'm an ultra marathon runner, so I run distances that are bigger than marathon. So I ran, I ran a 200 mile race in May of last year and I actually ended up winning the race and uh, becoming the first finisher of the race since 2016 um, and the first, the second person ever to finish that particular race in the time limit that you're given. And I was like, okay, maybe I've got a bit of a, a knack for this endurance stuff. So I wanted to do something like um, a multiple marathon um, kind of feat. And I kind of thought, when I thought about doing 32 marathons in 32 days in 32 counties, I thought, no, I'm probably going to be able to do that. Um, looking at, you know, I did nearly eight marathons in two and a half days. So I was thinking, how could we, you know, inject a kind of an element of doubt into it? We, we've we been talking about motivation and needing to have something to motivate you to do stuff like this. So this isn't just to, to show that you can do 32 marathons in 32 days. When you, the, the why is actually a, it's quite a serious thing mm. underneath it all. Big time, yeah. Um, I suppose I, I, I struggled with mental health. For, um, for, for many years, in my late teen years, into my 20s, up until recently, really. And um, it was kind of through this whole ultra running and uh, through the training for the ultra marathons that I kind of um, worked my way out of, out of this depression. And that's why I decided to do it for PA House, and that's why the weight is there as well. How did the mental health issues affect your day-to-day -day life? Oh, I didn't want to get out of bed in the mornings. I didn't want to even get out and go for a shower. Um, I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I, I isolated myself. Um, it came to times where I, I contemplated taking my own life. Um, it really, really affected me at times. It was, it was an up and down, um, constant kind of roller coaster. I'd have these huge highs and then these crashing lows, and I could never like uh, get this kind of place where I could just be. How did you diagnose it? And how, like, um, what age did this start? Um, my first actual memory was when I was 17, I went to, to Tanzania and climbed Kilimanjaro um, for charity. And when I came back, I had this like, huge sense of achievement. I couldn't wait to get home and tell my parents, oh, I climbed to the top of Africa and all these things. And then I just felt so low and empty and hollow afterwards. It was like, I could, I did, maybe I didn't prepare myself for like, getting back into normality and like, preparing for a leaving cert and all this kind of stuff. And that was kind of the first time that I really remember like feeling like in a depressed state, like feeling like, you know, in a bad mood, you know, in a, in a low kind of a lull mood for, for days and weeks at a time. And did you, did you have access to help at that point or did you know what to do even? Cause that's, think... that's kind of the big reason why I decided to, to raise money for PA to House because I had no idea about them and I had no idea about what they did uh, or the extent of the work that they did, that they're completely free and confidential and like that they were, they, their door was always open to me. But I just never knew that that door was even, that that door even existed. So I, th I think that's one of the big things in that people don't actually know how to access help. First off, you don't know you need help because you're like, well, I just feel bad. And I feel bad because I felt good for a while and I probably, maybe I deserve this or maybe I'm not doing something right. And actually, Absolutely. and then that becomes kind of self-defeating and you end up in this kind of situation where you don't even know you need to ask for help. And then if you did know, where the hell do you go? I felt an awful lot of guilt, to be honest with you, Jar, because I had such a, you know, on the outside, such a great life. You know, I had, a, I was going to a good school. I, my, I came from a very, very loving family. Um, I had everything kind of going for me, really, you know, but... I felt guilty for feeling bad and that's why I never told anybody about it. I never sought any help because I felt like, you know, I have this great life, this wonderful life. Why do I feel so, you know, so bad? I shouldn't feel this way. And, and the guilt kind of stopped me from getting help really. And as that continues, what happens? Um, as, as it continued through my, yeah. my life, um, I, I was kind of constantly searching for like uh, something external that I could put my focus on. I kind of realised that without focus, without something to focus on, I was kind of, um, I was kind of lost. 
So I found I found Thai boxing as a teenager, then um, Muay Thai kickboxing, and I just got completely and utterly obsessed with it. It was just eat, breathe, sleep Thai boxing, and I, I fought all the way up through the ranks until I fought um, for an Irish title in 2013. Um, and I actually got knocked unconscious in the last minute of the last round of that fight. And that just like obliterated me, you know, in terms of like my emotional um, state and my mental state. I just couldn't take it. So um, it's just projection of your issues into this one thing, which absolutely. then there's a setback in and all of a sudden you're not exactly equipped to deal with that. Exactly, yeah, I had no way of dealing with it. Um, I, I, I had put so much into it and I never thought about it backfiring. So um, as soon as this external thing that was meant to fix my problems blew up in my face, I had no real, you know, um, I, I had no way of keeping it going. What happens then? Yeah, what happens then? Um, I kind of, I, 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 I actually messed around with Thai boxing, you know, after that point, but my, my passion kind of really died for it. Um, I ended up moving country then um, to kind of like basically leave my Irish life. And a lot of people do that. A yeah, lot sometimes of people it works. Do that. And yeah, like so, and sometimes it does work. And sometimes people are actually able to pick up a brand new life. But I just completely just lived my Irish life, um, which I then, I, when I was Thai boxing, I was like a monk, and I used to just live this like regimented lifestyle where I, you know, I wouldn't drink or smoke or or eat bad or or stay out late. And then um, from from there, I went to the complete opposite end and just took a nosedive into the bar scene. Um, where did you go? I, um, I was just I, I, oh, where did I move to? I moved to Vancouver. So like when I, I had picked up these habits of like going out and drinking quite a lot um, in Ireland and then I just basically brought them with me when I moved to Vancouver. So um, that kind of was like a fruitless endeavor. I stayed there for about a year. I got this, this burst of kind of like, I want to reignite the flame of this Thai boxing career. And I actually moved to Thailand um, and I fought there again for a while. But I, in the meantime, I was actually, I was diagnosed with a benign cyst in my brain. Right. So I basically shouldn't have been boxing at all. And that kind of was always in the back of my mind. So that just completely killed it then. Okay, and how's your mental health through all that? Um, it's up and down. Um, as long as I kind of had something that I could focus on or whatever, it was kind of, it was okay. But it was very, very tough for me to, to regulate my own thoughts. So if I would think about something that um, would be bothering me, like uh, sometimes I would think about my Irish title fight back in 2013 and I'd get this, the fight or flight. I'd get the, I'd get the raised heart rate, I'd get the burst of heat and I wouldn't be able to like properly deal with, with certain memories. Um, and, and that kind of, that was like a, a constant uh, through, through the whole thing was I wasn't able to actually deal with anything from my past um, or dealing with any painful memories or anything like that, so. How do you develop those skills? Um, for me, it was when I actually, I had actually ran a 100 mile race um, before I ran this 200 mile race that I was uh, talking to you guys about. Um, and when I started to train for the 200 mile race, I thought back to this 100 mile race that I had done. I'd, I'd done it with, I had done it with seven weeks training. So like a lot of these things that I do are just like, boom, snap decisions, let's just do it. I had seven weeks training, trained for the Connemara 100 and my body just completely gave up on me after mile 55 and my mind got me the 45 miles home to actually finish it in 28 hours. And I thought about that more and more, that I was going to have to put my mind in those uncomfortable positions over and over and over again to, before I did the 200 mile race. And so when I put my, my mind in those uncomfortable positions and I, and I, and I stressed my body and I stressed uh, my mind, it broke down barriers for me. Um, and I remember one day in particular, it was a really cold February morning. I had always run my headphones in, music playing in the mornings. And all of a sudden, I was in this 30 kilometer run. I was about 300 meters in and I heard beep beep, my Bluetooth headphones died in my ears. And I was left with like just all I could hear was my footsteps and my breath and my thoughts. And I just kind of let them run. And I, and I was started to think about all the reasons why we were here and why I was doing this and why I was, you know, why I was trying to get my life on track and why I was trying to, to, to train for this 200 mile or why I was trying to do all of these things. Why was I trying to keep going? And uh, when I actually allowed myself to actually have those thoughts and have those kind of interactions with myself, I was able to think through all these things that used to give me these, these, these fight or flight, these bursts. They didn't, they didn't happen anymore because I was able to think about them from, from, I was taking accountability, I was taking responsibility for what happened. I was also grateful for my life as well. I was grateful that I was able to make it through all those times. And the final thing was I was compassionate with myself. 
and I was actually able to forgive myself for decisions that I had made, for you know, mistakes that I had made, for times I had taken the easy way out. I was able to actually forgive myself for all of these things. And as I worked through all of those things, I realised it was nothing about the running. And it was nothing about how much mileage I did that morning or, you know, if I went out for a half marathon in the morning. All it was was about getting out and listening to me and listening to what I was saying. Did somebody teach you that? No. Completely, I suppose, self-learned, let's say, um, out of nowhere, really. If, I, I feel like there was something working with me that, that morning my headphones died because I remember running 30 kilometres and thinking about all these things and I was in work and I wasn't in work. I was just completely, I was there in physical form but in mental state all I was thinking about was that run and thinking about these things and not having that, not having that burst of, of like heart, raised heart rate when I was thinking about these painful things. So I, I finished work, I put back on my sweaty gear from that morning and just ran from work, just went out for another like 15 kilometres because I was like, I, I thought in that time I had to be there, I had to be running at that time to, to unlock this, this new way of looking at my life. But that actually wasn't the case, it was just that it just happened that way. And uh, then I would start thinking about it when I was sitting down having a cup of coffee or I was on the bus or I was So you accessed your own... Exactly, yeah. I was, it was just able to... And now you like, can access it any time you need it. Yeah. Perspective, I suppose, is, the, is, the, is what it is. It's like I was looking at my life from, from a certain angle for a long time and I just allowed myself to take that step to the right or step to the left and, and look at it from these different angles. And as soon as I did that, it was... I found here. I wasn't up here and I wasn't down here. I found yeah. here. Which is peace. Yeah, I would, I would say so, yeah. I'm still on this journey, it's still continuing, you know. And you have to be careful about it to make sure that you don't lose that perspective again. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I suppose that's the thing that I, 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 I do um, quite, quite a lot of public talks and things like that, but I said the best thing for me to actually do is to, is to show people what this is about and the physical manifestation of this kind of like new rebirth in my head was running, so that's why the 32 marathons in 32 days in 32 counties came. Look, it is a remarkable story and I think anybody can't but be inspired by what you're saying. There's a GoFundMe for people to, there's, yeah, to it's donate. A, it's I donate. Um, there's an I donate page on my Instagram. Um, C. O'Keefe is the Instagram page and that's where most of it's coming, coming through. So starting on April the 1st, running 32 marathons in 32 days with 32 pounds on your back in the 32 counties, all for Pieta House. We wish you the very best of luck Thank with it. It's a much. phenomenal Thank undertaking and I hope we're going to follow you along the way and uh, day by day check in and give people updates to try and help you get to that 100 grand. Thank you so much. Cheers. Connor, great stuff. Thanks a million for joining us.